Today's video, Batman flies high in the sky as we have a look at the new Mattel Batman Missions. This is Stealth Glider Batman. And this video certainly couldn't have been made possible without viewer Bill, who took the time and sent this my way. Thanks again, Bill. Let's go ahead and take the tape measure to figure out how tall Stealth Glider Batman is. Right to the very top of his ears. That would be the ears on his cowl. And stopping the tape measure right there. There we go. The figure stands from foot to ear, 6.4 inches in height. Switching that to centimeters, the figure stands 16.2 centimeters in height. For some comparisons, I'll bring in some of the other Batmans that we've looked at from Batman Missions. This one was the one that came in clue with the Bane and the Robin. This is the one that was the standalone one that had all that extra armor stuff all over its arms. You can see that the figure isn't really that much different from the others. It actually, if you look at them here, you'll see that there is variations to the armor. I mean, looking at all three of them, they don't share the same torso. I thought that this one might have actually been the same as this one, but you'll see that even the sides of the armor right here, it's a little bit more meshing texturing here that's been done. Um, certainly, one could certainly say that Mattel has uh, broken the mold and given us brand new torsos and stuff like that. I don't know why they couldn't have just simply given us the exact same armor on all of them. It seems to me like it'd be easier to just simply produce the exact same mold again and again and again, just changing out the coloring. But to Mattel's credit, these are different molds than one another. Even like this one here, you can see it's got a little bit more of a serrated shaping here in the lower torso. And it's got these open gap areas here where this Batman doesn't have it. Uh, the head sculpts look like they are identical to one another, even this one right here. Other than for the fact that this one has the eyes, these ones, two, these two here don't have eyes. The head sculpts do appear to be identical, though. Now, this Batman doesn't have a cape because one of his accessories that comes included with the figure is this neat-looking bat glider. I love the design of this because it looks like a bat emblem. Obviously, that's their intent when they designed this, but it does look really neat. You flip it around and there's these two connector points right here. This will be what connects to Batman's back. You'll see that there's two peg holes. So we just simply plug those into place and instantly Batman's got himself a glider. That looks really neat, I like that. Uh, one of the things you can also do as well, just take this back off, put him right there. Stay there, Batman, stay there. Don't worry, we'll get back to you in a second. Uh, it's this little kind of grappling hook that can be detached from the from the actual glider and you can use it for a weapon. Just clips into Batman's hand. Not the easiest sometimes, but it does clip into his hand. Looking at it, it does look like this part should detach. I can tell you though, it does not. It's molded plastic. You can see right, off, right, right away when we flip it around that it's molded. Uh, it doesn't have the means to detach. They probably didn't want to have it as a detachable thing anyways, because this could be something, something small enough that a child could swallow it. Uh, also with the glider, I'll just put him there for a second. Sometimes this Batman doesn't want to stand properly. Um, like I said, there's that those connector points right there. And then there's these things. I'm not really sure specifically what those are for, other than maybe other Batman weapons could plug into there. I know you can take one, you can take one of the pegs from the little grapple harpoon here, and you can you can attach it. Now it doesn't stay well in place but you can, you can almost sort of attach it. Let's move it down a little bit here. I mean, it kind of stays in place, but it does really want to fall out, which leads me to believe, I'm wondering what these were specifically for. It would have been ideal if these were hinge points where the, the wings could have brought out a little bit further, that like you could swing them out. Obviously, this is just all one solid piece, so you can't do that. So I am wondering what those connector points are for. It's not like there's any other place on Batman where those can connect. And if you're also wondering too, these little, the pegs on here can't fit into his back. It's just, the pegs are way too big. So you get this, 
And I guess in some ways you could connect, you could have them holding it kind of like a big, like a big giant ax, but I suppose that really isn't the intent for it. So I, I like this. I like that it's an alternative to just giving him a cape all the time. Just plug that in and we'll just put that to the side. Okay, so looking at the figure itself, digging the dark colors that they've given the Cape Crusader here, sort of the coloring of, it's not quite gray. Now, entertain me here for a second. Let me just go off and say this. I think this is kind of like a greenish gray. It's almost kind of got green undertones to it. It's not completely a dark, solid gray. The coloring actually works quite well here, especially when you have the backdrop here of that color with the bat logo in front of it. The logo is a neat looking design. It's the same design that we've seen with the other Batman figures, trimmed very excellently here in gold. The gold carries its way also to this neat looking, almost stylized looking utility belt. And he's also got the same coloring on his gauntlets here. You can certainly see that Mattel has done a lot in the way of just molding this guy. It's not a case where even like even the back, which normally would be concealed either by a cape or in this instance would be concealed by the glider, they've still sculpted all these intricate little details here, which almost kind of look like bat symbols themselves. This one right here kind of looks like a bat symbol and this sort of has the look of a bat symbol. The front again has some nice detailing there. I'm not really sure what's happening here with the with the shoulder. It looks like it should be a little bit more defined than what it is. You can kind of see the slight indications of something, but you have to like look real close. What am I looking at here? Are these armor plates? If they are, they should be a little bit more defined. I'm not gonna be overly critical, of course, for a, a, a child's action figure. It's got some nice detailing there in the legs and even the boots they've sculpted in place as well with some peg holes. I don't really know why they give these figures peg holes when they never really come with, I guess Batman does come with uh, like a bike and he also comes with a, a, a Batmobile which we will be looking at in future videos um, but uh, I'm wondering maybe that's why they put peg holes in these because it always escapes me why why figure companies produce figures with peg holes and then they don't they don't make anything else where it would justify why they would come with peg holes to start off with articulation on this guy is actually pretty good his head rotates all the way around. It's got a ball joint, as you can see right there. Let me just, I'll leave it on just in case, just in case. I don't want to take it off just to show you that there's a, a ball joint and then ultimately break that off. But there is a ball joint underneath all that. You'll have to just kind of take my word for it. Arms hinge out, which is a, is a feat that seems like all figures should really have that. And yet there are like, for example, Hasbro figures that usually are just doing this. That's it. This, at the very least, you can get Batman to have his arms hinge outward. You can bend his elbows. You can also rotate the forearms and you can rotate the hands. I think this should be standard on all figures. You should never have a figure that doesn't have articulation on the elbows to move out or the shoulders to move out. You should always have elbow articulation and you can also always rotate the arms or the rotate the hands. I think that should be across the board. Unfortunately though, much like where everything else comes short, the Batman missions line gets sort of relegated to cheaper methods when it comes to his lower articulation. He's got the waist swivel, for example. Uh, legs move forward and back, but I kind of wish again that the legs could have hinged outward. I mean, they're doing it with the arms. Why can't they do it with the legs as well? At the very least, you can walk away with knowing that this Batman does have knee articulation. So if you're thinking to yourself, I really wish if anything, this guy's gonna have knee articulation. You can sleep tight tonight, my friends. He does have knee articulation. Um, I dig the color of this guy. I've made probably men mention of this more often than once, but just in case I've only said it once, I'll say it again. The head sculpts remind me of like the old DC Universe classic figures. I mean, that kind of looks like the old vintage Batman. I say vintage when you think of how long ago that was, but it does look like the old DC Universe Batman figures. Um, the articulation could be a little bit better, of course, in the legs. This is sort of common practice now It comes when it comes to mass-produced kids' toys that they always seem to relegate them only to standard swivels. At the very least for Batman, and certainly at the very least for the Batman missions, he does have posability in the shoulders, and that is at least something. 
I think why I have an appeal for the Batman Missions line is because looking at the toys, it reminds me of the stuff that I was growing up with and collecting from, say, the likes of Kenner. Now, back in the day, Kenner figures were even worse for articulation, usually relegated to only arms, the legs, and the head. So five points of articulation was your takeaway. But still, there was charm to those figures, and then they had accessories, and they had vehicles, which is something that the Batman Missions line, to the credit of Mattel, is something that they're doing as well. They're releasing these figures, and they're releasing them with vehicles. We're going to be having a look at some of the vehicles in future videos. Um, as for this Batman, I do like the look of him. I mean, looking at the head sculpt, I feel like I'm either looking at the old vintage Kenner Superpowers uh, Batman or I'm looking at a DC Universe Classics Batman. Either way, digging the look of the head sculpt. The bodies are pretty much what you would expect for the, the kids' toys that you're getting out in stores nowadays. To the credit, though, of the Batman missions, at the very least, you get postability in the arms, which is something that even like some of the Spider-Man figures seem to have a struggle with nowadays. So I commend the Batman missions line. Uh, for producing some pretty neat looking Batman figures. Now for all the Batman figures out there, I hope we're at least gonna be starting to see some more villains. Up to the point of shooting this video, I think all we've really gotten was a Joker and a Harley Quinn. I keep seeing a tease on the back of the packaging for a Batgirl, and yet I've yet to see a Batgirl hitting retail store shelves. If one does come out and it's based on the costume that I'm seeing, I'm going to be pretty excited to pick that one up as well. Either way, though, a big thank you to viewer Bill for making this review possible. Bill was nice enough to send this figure my way, along with some other Batman mission goodies. And don't worry, we're going to have a look at those. I'm going to try my best to try to bang through all the stuff that he's sent my way. If he was nice enough to take the time to send it my way, I would be at least nice enough to do the reviews of them as well. So stay tuned for those. If you guys, in the meantime, haven't hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? More videos will be coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.